But the thing is, coding standards don't always improve quality. Which leads me nicely onto PSR2. And one of my favorite hobby horses, which is, which is what inspired this whole talk. Are you all familiar with PSR2? Have you all heard of it? Okay. So for those of you who haven't, um, the PSR standards are PHP community standards. Um, PSR2 is one of our oldest, and after auto-loading, it's probably the most widely adopted, I'd say. And you can follow that link and that QR code to read all about them. Now, what I want to do with you is I want to, I want to give you a quick breakdown of what's in PSR2. I want to do a quick analysis of it for you. Those of you who are using PSR2, have you got a rough guess as to how big it is? How many requirements it puts on you? A hundred. It's not a bad guess. Then you want to go higher or lower than a hundred? Lower. Okay. Anyone want to go higher? Chris looks like he wants to. Yeah, PSR two includes PSR one as well. well. It references PSR one, so I wouldn't include PSR one in it. By my methodology, there's ninety six. It could actually be ninety nine, and I've added it up wrong. I should actually double check that figure, but I've got 96 in my slides. I want to explain my methodology. PSR2 uses keywords like a lot of internet standards do. And you can go around and add all these up to see how, see how many are used. Now, only five of these keywords are actually used in the body of the text. And they're distributed like this. So PSR2 is mostly, if you're following it, it's mostly mandatory. There's a little bit of wriggle room here and there, but not much. There is a little bit more than it looks like. Well, I'll come on to that in a moment. Now, I want to share some important caveats about my methodology. Um, you know, some other people may do their own uh, analysis and come up with slightly different results. So I want to explain some things about mine. Not all must requirements are of equal weight. Sometimes PSR2 will say, this thing is optional. If you want to do it, you must do it this way. I have not broken those out into um, the musts are there. I've counted them as musts. I haven't uh, watered them down at all. PSR2 currently um, contains duplicates. And we're going to show you some of those in a more moment because they're actually relevant to this talk. And some of them are redundant. Some of them are actually enforced by the PHP interpreter. I have not removed those either from my figures. I've just done a straight count. So that's what that's a numerical breakdown of PSR2. I care about quality. I've built two, three QA teams over the years, including one at Hewlett Packard, um, which I was brought in and headhunted to, to set up and run. Um, anyone use DAT drives, old fashioned tape drives? I set up and ran the QA team for DDS4 which was really cool because I actually got to sit down with the guy who wrote the spec for that and show him the system performed better than his calculations expected, which was a lovely day that was because the tape manufacturer had improved the quality of the tape as well, which he hadn't accounted for. That was a lovely day. Made his day, that did. Um, QA teams. But PSR2. So how much of PSR2 do you think directly improves the quality of your code for doing numbers? Oh, Chris was uh, even more brutal than me there. So here's our distribution. How much of that do you think? Anyone give me a number? Anything below 96? Go on, Chris. None. None? OK. Does anyone want to go higher than zero? Nope. It doesn't. The things that make <laughs> you be a bit more verbose. So the rules okay. about not having one character variable names and stuff. Right. Which are in PSR2, okay. not PSR1. That, I could argue that is an improvement. You could argue so that? Does that have anything about the numbers of things in methods? Mm. I can't remember if that's in PSR. It's that much. So there's a small amount, and they're all mandatory, interestingly enough. And they actually fit on a single slide. Um, and um, some of them are duplicated as well. So three times it talks about visibility being declared, which absolutely improves the quality of your code and prevents bugs. Emitting the closing tag absolutely present, prevents bugs. So anyone who uses Zend Expressive knows all too well. And putting comments in there to say that you've deliberately fallen through from one case statement to the next 
absolutely prevents bugs. But by my count, that's it. Um, I didn't think about the short letters because when I started in the old days, everything was one letter. <laughs> so I didn't think about that, that's a good point. Now in terms of numbers, that's just over 5% of PSR2. So if any of you are following PSR2 to improve quality, hopefully I'm starting to um, shake that foundation a little bit. But what is it? What would you say PSR2 is actually there for? What's its actual purpose? To ensure consistency. Consistency. Okay. Would anyone agree with that? Anyone disagree? Prevent arguments with developers about how to do something. Prevent arguments about how to do something. I used to do that all the time. Okay. You're absolutely right. PSR2 is a code formatting standard to avoid those kind of arguments. And I would classify it as a social standard. It's about saying to people, we've all got to work together. We need some commonality here so we're not wasting our time arguing about things that, at the end of the day, actually don't matter most of the time. Now, can consistent formatting of code actually improve quality by osmosis? Yes. yes. It's a bit of a mixed bag. From my point of view, as someone who goes into organizations and helps them, consistent formatting makes code more accessible to people. Our industry continues to grow. Software is everywhere these days. Most businesses are a software business, whether they're a tech business or not. And because we've always got new people coming into the industry, the average experience in our industry is declining year on year. And there aren't that many people of my age still in the industry. Um, it's not unusual for me to be the oldest person in the room these days. I don't think I am tonight, but... <laughs> so anything that makes it easier for people to get at code is a good thing. Because the first thing about quality is actually being able to read it. And the poster child for that, of course, is Perl. I'm old enough to have worked in the pre-web industry and also to have been a Perl programmer building websites in the very early days. Now, Perl used to be the language for that. The main reason it's not anymore is Perl 6. However, Perl 5 had a problem that it was known as a write once language. It was so hard to read it accurately that people tended not to update code because if they did, it tended to break quite badly. So this is a positive. We're learning from our mistakes as an industry. Unfortunately, I've, firsthand I've seen PSR2 introduce problems. How much, of you know, how, how much do you know about how we read books? How the human brain actually reads? So human brains are pattern recognition machines. We invent patterns whether they exist or not. Um, see, see politics, for example. And so when we're reading things, we're not reading letter by letter, word by word. The brain's looking for key things that it recognizes as a shape, and it will fill in the blanks for you. That's why, for example, if you go and read um, books that have won literary awards, they're often quite hard to read because they use patterns that you're not familiar with, and the brain forces you to switch back to reading in a much slower way. Now, I have actually sat down with people who are senior developers and had to read their code back to them. They were using PSR2, they have been using PSR2 for years, and their code wasn't working. But the problem was they couldn't fix the bugs because they actually were misreading the code that was in front of them. Their brain had switched to this pattern recognition approach, and they actually thought the code said something different, which is the heart of the problem. So for me, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll have seen me tweet out many times that PSR2 co causes bugs, and this is what I'm on about. It's really hard to make your code do what you, th what you want it to when it actually s you think it says something different to what it does. So my advice is if you want a code layout standard, you might as well use PSR2, because it doesn't matter which code layout standard you've got, it's still going to have this trap of how the brain works. So you might as well use one everyone else is using. But if you're using it explicitly as a code quality standard, I would urge you not to anymore, because it doesn't do anything about quality. Now, I want to give a shout out here to Ken Guest, who, when I was, said I was doing this talk, pointed me at the fact there's some work underway to replace PSR2. 
and he asked me to have a look at it and comment on it for this talk. Um, I didn't know it was. I didn't know about it, so thank you, Ken. For those watching on YouTube, that will take you to where the um, drafts currently are. But if you're watching this in a year or two's time, that link will probably be dead, and it will probably have moved because that's how the UPSR group manage their documentation. The question is, is the upcoming replacement any different? Chris is already shaking his head. <laughs> so here's my analysis of PSR2, and I've normalized the y-axis for comparison purposes. And this is what the new upcoming draft looks like when I use the same methodology on it. It's grown a bit. Any ideas what it's up to? Introducing rules for the new features in PHP 7. OK, but do you reckon total number of requirements? Can you give me a number? The old one was 96. I've had to adjust the y-axis, so it's clearly bigger. Do you want to have a guess? 150. Higher or lower than 150? I should be a game show host, shouldn't I? Yeah. PSR2 game show. I'm going to have to figure out how to do that as a talk. <laughs> You're pretty close. By my methodology, it's 138. So it's well on its way. And by the time it's released, it'll be even bigger. So here's, again, with my methodology, here's how much of PSR2 improve, directly improves quality. Any guesses for how, how that bar's going to move? Higher, lower? Anyone reckon? Higher? Stay the same. Stay the same. T Mark says a tiny bit higher. Well done, Mark. <laughs> it goes from five to six. <laughs> so they still just, I admit I've dropped the font size, they still fit on a single slide. It's the five we've already seen, and then a very important one about having to put braces all the time at the end of if statements, which is a huge improvement in quality. That one really does fix a lot of bugs. But in terms of numbers, we've gone from 5.2 to 4.3%. Now that looks like it's getting worse, and that's not the impression I want to give. The thing is about this upcoming replacement for PSR2 is it's much better written. Obviously, it's easier with 2020 hindsight to look at PSR2 and look at how people have adopted it and say, well, how could we make what's in there more accessible to people? So the upcoming replacement, as Chris said, it's got some improvements because PS PHP 7 introduced new features that didn't exist, but primarily it's a much better written PSR2. It's not attempting to change what PSR2, um, the scope of the standard, what PSR2 is, is at all. So it's not going to be a quality standard either. So we're about halfway through the talk at the minute. Hopefully I've convinced you that QA teams and PSR2 are not how you improve quality. Quality you've got to focus on with your developers. How am I doing on that so far? Stunned silence, the second night in a row. <laughs> I did this at Newcastle as well. <laughs> that was a different topic. So what I want to do with the rest of the talk, I just want to look at what coding standards that improve quality actually look like. And I'm glad Chris is in the audience. He's going to recognize these. <laughs> 